Okay, so this is your first practical. It's a practical, it's tests for presence of biological molecules. Uh, sometimes it's called food tests just because your food is made of biological molecules and if somebody wants to know what's in it, they might carry out this series of tests to find out. We've got actually known solutions, so we're not testing food, we're testing things that we know already are there just to demonstrate what's in and um, you know, what the positive results are. So I'm going to start off with glucose. Glucose is a monosaccharide. Because it's a monosaccharide, it is what we call a reducing sugar. Now that means it will reduce the copper 2 salt in this Benedict solution, which is blue, to the copper 3 salt, which is red and also insoluble. So we're going to uh, be looking for a precipitate. Now when you're describing your uh, tests for biological molecules, I'm just going to cheat a bit here and just tip some in. When you're describing the tests for biological molecules, you need to say how you carry it out, so what you actually do, what the colour changes, so what it starts off as and what it ends as. So here we would say add to a sample solution Benedict's reagent and then this is the one that we need to heat and I'm going to try not to spray um, <laughs> Dr. Sam with hot Benedict solution. Now you heat it in a water bath, that is by far the safest thing to do. Um, any chemist will tell you you don't heat in a test tube, which is what I'm doing now. I should have tongs. I've just pulled it out the Bunsen really quickly because I felt it sort of start to knock. If it boils, it just shoots out the top of the test tube in an entertaining but quite dangerous fashion. And um, we can see that at the bottom where it's warm, we've started to get this uh, precipitate of the copper three salt. So our colour change is going to be, I should really be concentrating on this, the colour change is going to be blue and the colour that we describe it as is a brick red precipitate. Now it does go through a range of other colours first, so it goes green to yellow, so you can see at the top of the tube it's kind of greeny at the, just above the brick red precipitate and yellow. For that reason we say it's semi-quantitative and if I leave it there because it's nice and warm now it will continue to change colour. So we might have a look at that a bit later. The second compound <coughs> solution that I've got is a sucrose solution. Now sucrose is also a sugar and you should remember from your theory that it is a disaccharide. Um, not all of the disaccharides are non-reducing but sucrose is a non-reducing sugar. That means that the reducing part of the molecule has actually been used up in a bond and because it's been used up in a bond, it shouldn't react with the Benedict. So it really wouldn't matter how much I heated this, we're not going to get a colour change. So if you can imagine, if you were testing, say, you know, sugar-free Coke, has it really not got sugar in? You might take Benedict's, you'd heat it up, it's not going to change colour. But if the manufacturer, if you're drinking roller cola and the manufacturer's decided to cheat, to give it a bit of flavour and has put some sucrose in, that still wouldn't show up. So, after you've heated your sucrose solution with Benedict's and it hasn't changed colour, you need to do it again. Now this time we're going to break down that glycosidic linkage that holds the sucrose together. And to do that, we could use an enzyme, but we're going to use acid instead. We're going to use hydrochloric acid. I'm just going to give it a bit of heat. Uh, again, in your instructions it says put this in a water bath. The heat will just help that reaction to happen. So what is happening in the test tube at the moment is the hydrochloric acid is breaking the bond between the glucose and fructose. So what I've got in here now is hydrochloric acid, glucose and fructose. 
Now glucose and fructose are monosaccharides and that means they're reducing groups have not been used in the bond. And because they've not been used in the bond, it should react with Benedict solution. We do need to make sure that we do need to make sure that the acid isn't going to um, in any way interfere with that reaction. So I've got a weak alkali here of sodium carbonate solution. I'm just going to tap it. <laughs> that was the emergency stop for the yes, and my gas has gone out. Brilliant. Well done, Dr. Sal. <laughs> so what I've done, <laughs> done there is neutralise it. I'm really hoping that now that this is warm enough for the Benedicts to react because we can't get the gas back on. <laughs> I didn't swear. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's a bonus. So if I leave this in here, I think it's going to be warm enough for it to actually react. And because it's now got um, our reducing sugars in, it should turn so that you would get this sort of reaction. So you would get that brick red precipitate. As it, it might not be quite warm enough. Um, bit of a bit stuff now. Anyway, you get the picture. The key thing is, I think the thing that's most confusing about that test is the need to start with a fresh sample because once you've tested it with Benedict's it's not going to react in the same way. So you're not going to be able to break it down into its monosaccharide constituents. So, uh, our next carbohydrate is a polysaccharide and it's starch and this should be a test that you're very familiar with from school. We put a bit of starch in solution into a test tube. You can see that iodine is a nice brown colour. We drop it in, it's going to change to this lovely blue-black colour. So that's the positive test for starch. So if you're using starch to say stain plant cells and it turns blue-black, uh, you use iodine, it turns blue-black, it means those cells have got starch in. Okay, moving swiftly on to my favourite test. This is the test for a protein. And um, the test is actually not for the protein as such, it's for the bond that holds the amino acids together, which is a peptide bond. And it's called the Bioret test because it uses blue Bioret solution. Um, this is not one that we need to heat, so remember that only the Benedict's needs to be heated. Again, I'm just going to cheat a bit by just tipping in instead of fiddling with droppers. And when we pour our blue Bioret solution in and give it a bit of a shake, it goes this gorgeous purple colour. It's actually you know, violet is its correct term. So that's protein that tests for presence of peptide bonds. Last but not least, we've got the test for lipid. So we've got a little bit of olive oil here. I only need a little tiny drop because um, oil, as you know, does not mix with water. It doesn't dissolve in water. It's completely hydrophobic and it would just float on water. So we're going to use uh, ethanol to dissolve the lipid. And this is quite a tricky process. It needs quite a lot of uh, vigorous shaking. So you shake it really vigorously, and I know that the chemists say don't put your thumb on the top. Uh, that's because usually chemists don't know what's in the test tubes. I do. So uh, I've just got um, raw alcohol and some fat in there. And a bit of vigorous shaking, and we get a nice colourless liquid. And when I pour some water in, this is like magic, which is what chemistry is, obviously. Um, it goes this beautiful cloudy white colour. So this is called, because of the chemicals we use, the ethanol emulsion test. It's a milky white emulsion. So if there's a fat in the food stuff you're testing, it will dissolve in the ethanol and then when you pour it into water or pour water into it, it will give you a milky white emulsion. Same reaction that you get with Perno drinks. Uh, Perno is made from aniseed, aniseed's got oil in it. The oil dissolves in the alcohol, 
you add water before you drink it for reasons known only to French people and it goes cloudy white. Okay, that's it for food tests. You do need to know those, you need to know the colour changes, you need to describe them, you need to know the whole lot off by heart. Sucrose update. It's gone. <laughs> oh yeah. Oh and the sucrose has it yeah, it's kind of it's kind of going now. It's not very warm now, it's not going to turn any further than that, but you can see little sort of spicules of, of that sort of greeny precipitate as compared to the negative results. Fabulous, thank you very much Dr Savile for ruining that. <laughs>